When creating a wildflower grassland, you need to just decide where uh, you are going to have the, uh, the, the, the meadow and try and select one that uh, will uh, provide you with the, with the best wild meadow um, grassland uh, site for you. Consider the preparation of, of the, the meadow from what you have now uh, into a long-term project of up to two or three years and then beyond uh, through maintenance uh, management. You've got to consider that poor or low fertility fields are going to be far better to uh, uh, establish and pH is also important at the five and a half, six pH level. That needs to be checked before you proceed with, with the work. Another aspect of uh, selecting the, the site is that uh, in the weald uh, it's been found that the low pH is also uh, important with the, uh, the slopes as the, um, you know, the fertility of the, the field it, it tends to run away down to, the, to the, the bottom of the slope. The client has to realise when they take on a wildflower meadow that it must be they have to be dedicated to the job they want to do. They mustn't just think it's something they can set up and then leave and come back four or five years later and it will still be as good as the first or second year. Creating the meadow, we would meet the uh, client and decide the quality of the pasture they've got. And this might, is usually very poor grassland. Sometimes it's arable and in both instances they may be getting a, a grant to help them. Before we do any work, we would walk around with them and we would see what's actually there and decide before we start cultivations or anything else and try and understand what they've got so that we're not wrecking something that may be very good to start off with. If we were uh, going to an area that was um, impoverished grassland and that was to be improved, we would recommend that they spray it off and open the seedbed up completely. Whether the seabed needs ploughing depends on the, the soil type and the condition of the existing surface area. If it's rutted and uh, got holes in it, plough it before you put your seed on. Otherwise, we would maybe put the seed into the existing surface. We can do that by several methods, harrowing and incorporating the seed in the surface or drilling it into the surface or surface broadcast. One thing we would insist on the client doing is to think early on what they want to do with their meadow, at least a year before they expect to see anything happen, because during that year we will spray off the ground, plough if it's necessary, power harrow several times to get a good level seedbed, make sure that it is an impoverished seedbed, um, come back and maybe spray two or three times to kill off all the weeds that are growing, and then after each spraying we will have a subsequent power harrowing to keep the seedbed alive and then we would come back once we've got this impoverished seedbed that's level and ready to work we would come back and seed with the seed that the, the client will get the sort of meadow they're expecting. It is important uh, with, with the project uh, to make sure that uh, the seed is wheeled and provenanced, i.e. It comes, it's been either hand harvested or, or combined um, by Agrifactor, so that the seed actually comes from the, the, the wheel. It, it needs to be applied either by hand, by um, you know, the traditional method, or sowing with a um, furter spreader, but it's important to ensure that the application is according to the recommendations. The seed that you can get from the WMI is applied between 15 and 20 kilograms per hectare. After we get germination, we would visit the client again and start talking the management of that pasture for the first year. The management would include regular short-term grazing or mowing and removing cuttings for the first year. Uh, in year two, once the, uh, the, the plants uh, have been established, it's important to then go into traditional haymaking systems of management where a crop is taken uh, of everything in the meadow to keep the fertility low and to encourage the, you know, the, the plants that you're trying to establish. 
In subsequent years, the um, pasture would need to be managed to keep the wildflowers growing and established. We would recommend that people take off their hay crop in the summer and uh, then graze native species of cattle or sheep to remove this long grass. Even if it's a last resort, you mow and remove it because it must be taken off so that the, the pasture is short when it goes into the next winter. During preparation and through the whole of the project to establish a wildflower grassland, it is imperative to make sure that no fertiliser is applied. This would encourage the grasses to dominate the introduced wildflowers, and this is not what you want to do. Ultimately, for wildflower creation, the choice of site and vigorous management will ensure the best results. Seek advice from the Weald Meadows Initiative and talk to specialist contractors and be flexible in your approach. Wildflower creation is a hugely rewarding process which benefits individuals and nature alike.